Hello everybody, Steve Burns here. Today I want to talk to you about creating simulated motion on 3D objects. So the actual Starship in the foreground is not moving very much, just on the X and Y axis. However, I've actually placed on as a surface texture a video of texture moving to simulate a concept of movement within the 3D interface. Okay, so let's start in After Effects so that I can share with you how I actually accomplished the actual texture. I'm utilizing in After Effects noise texture. First of all, I made sure I'm working under the workspace under the effects panel because that's going to optimize my workflow for the effects. Bottom right hand corner, you'll see the effects and presets tab. Targeting the noise is going to access this panel here called fractal noise. Now, targeting fractal noise is going to give me all types of options. Now, let me share with you what I've done so far. Then we're going to go back and take a look at some of these settings. As I move the slider, the playhead of the animation, you can actually see the texture moving from one point from the left hand side of my screen over toward the right. Now, I had a lot of different options, and actually, when you guys explore this, I would highly recommend that you just explore this. I use a dynamic texture, although we have um, various versions of textures you can play around with. We can go to Rocky, for instance. Um, mine was more of a school like, like a dynamic, was more of the effect I was getting, but we have all different types of choices here. So, going into dynamic, I decided to utilize... Um, play around with the contrast and brightness. We even have a rotation if you actually want to animate the, uh, the rotation aspects of it. The scale is kind of fun. As you get a little bit closer, you start to take a look at uh, different types of shapes and, and uh, smoothness going on within the fractal noise um, option here. Now, the actual effect that I use to, to animate the texture from the left to the right hand side of the frame was the offset turbulence here. If I put my mouse right over the coordinates here, I can just drag in to the right or drag to the left to actually create that uh, sense of motion. So with the playhead right over here to the far, far left here at the, at the first frame, which will animate all the way through 30 seconds here, because, because my timeline is set for seconds, I can come right over here to the offset. As you can see, I can target this as a keyframe, pull it all the way over here to the right, and you can see this little symbol where I can continue to give it a little more motion, pull this on over, and then hit this again to create a keyframe here. And it's going to change up a little bit my actual animation. Okay, so in essence, that's what I've actually used to create the, the simulated motion. Now, you even have different types of uh, influences here, like a sub-influence. And these are basically, let's go ahead and let's zoom in a little bit more so you, so you guys can see a little bit better what's going on. My influences here are, are like textures and overlaid on in layers, so to speak, right on top. So we can actually increase the contrast or add some more texture effects in here. And if I pull back a little bit on the actual scale, we get to see how that actually how that texture changes in appearance. And also the sub offset, right? So that's in other words, that's the sub filters or the texture that we're overlaying and we're affecting exactly how that's being offset or placed in X and Y axis uh, coordinates. Now, once this is actually complete it, I can save this out. So go to my file menu, export, and I can I can add it to render queue here or right down here in the bottom, you're gonna see a render queue tab targeted. Let's go ahead and pull this up just a little bit so that we can see right here, what I've done is I output it as a quick time. That's what I've chosen. I decided to output to a particular file name called lighttunnel.mov and of course it'll allow you to save it to the folder that uh, you want to um, to save the QuickTime file to. All right. So, once it's saved out, your texture's done, it's saved out. How do we place it onto our 3D objects? Here we are in Photoshop. We're dealing with two 3D objects, a simple tube or a cylinder and the starship. 
the Starship is inside the cylinder. Now take a look here. I have a single 3D scene sitting on top of a standard black filled layer. All right, so if I turn off the black filled layer, you can see right back here in the very background here, you can see the, we're seeing through the tube to the back area. All right, so let's go to the 3D panel here. Target it here. We can see both our, our two objects, the tube, and of course the starship there take note also the infinite light it's turned off completely huh what's going on here let's do a quick little render of this and see exactly what we're getting the light is turned off but and it appears if, if the 3d object in other words the starship is not being illuminated now look what's happening in addition to mapping the quick time texture on the inside of our cylinder we also utilize a quick time texture as a light source so what am i talking about here if we take a look at after effects again let's go ahead and, and enlarge this a little bit easier to see we can see a, a simulation or a various shades of gray so what i utilize this is not only as a texture for the surface of the tube, but also as a luminance map to turn that 3D object into a light source. Anywhere where there's bright areas is going to light the, your scene. Anywhere where there are darker areas will, will have less light onto um, your 3D scene. So that's what I did. So let's go back over here. Let's start with the tunnel. Let's open up the tunnel and take a look at its surface attributes. The extrusion section of the tube is where we map the actual 3D object on or, or, or map the quick time object on, on its surface. Now, let's take a look at what it looks like. Here's my surface extrusion. Right down here is the actual diffuse surface, which is the texture. I'm going to edit it. And if we edit, there it is. So we take a look at it and take the, and play with the playhead here. That uh, texture is actually mapped onto the scene. And there is the video, as you can see, being animated across the surface of our 3D object. Let's go ahead and, and close this out. All right. So taking a quick look at the secondary view here, we can see a long slender cylinder and on its surface we have the actual video that's being mapped onto it. So it's not going to play here in OpenGL in the secondary view, but it gives you a really good idea to how this is being mapped on. Now, let's talk about the illumination value. Remember we turned, we're using, utilizing this texture that we created in After Effects as a illumination map. In other words, we're going to turn the 3D object into a light source. Anywhere that's bright is going to illuminate. Anywhere that's darker is going to have less illumination. So back to our 3D options here, back to the extrusion. And once the extrusion is targeted, we're going to go right down here under the illumination option in your properties panel. On the right hand side, this is where we applied our texture, open it up, and there it is once again, the same video that we applied onto the diffuse channel. All right, so now let's do a render here to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm gonna close out the secondary view, and I'm gonna pull in a little bit closer to the ship, and let's do a quick render, control or command, option or alt, shift, all three held down in R, for render. So now the subject is going to be illuminated by the actual texture. Now if you take a look at it as it starts to render, I've also applied a reflective property to the surface of the ship so that the actual veins on, on the side of the tube shows up or the actual texture reflects in the surface of the ship. So as this is moving across, going from forward to back of the tube, it also shows the same reflection on the ship, which helps enhance its uh, the effect of motion. Let's go ahead and hit escape key to stop our render. Now, what about the starship here? Let's target, let's target it just a little bit and let's pull back a little bit here. Now, we didn't add much motion to it, but we added a little bit. Let's go ahead and just bring the timeline up just a little bit so we can see um, more um, of, of these properties. 
And if it helps, I'm going to come right over here, go to my my panel options and tell it to go to the small thumbnail size so you can see a little bit more going on down here. Now, I'm looking at layer number two on our layers. This is where our 3D objects, I want to animate to the ship a little bit. All I really want to do is animate it on the X and Y direction. Most of the texture is actually going to create the um, illusion or illusion of motion. So layer two, this is where my 3D objects are located. Let's go ahead and pull this down over to the right here. And I want to access the 3D meshes subfolder. There's my tunnel and there's my ship. I'm going to target the ship and bring down the subfolder for that. And you can see we also have um, the various textures for the ship underneath it. However, we want the ship. Now, the playhead is at the beginning. And what I think I'm going to do is just move the, the, the ship forward just a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and give it a keyframe there by clicking this little hourglass type symbol. Let's move the playhead to somewhere like eight frames. Now let's move it down slightly. Let's move the play playhead a little forward and I'm just being sloppy about this. I'm going to move it up again but this time I'm going to move it also to a little bit to the right. And let's go over into the a little bit more over this one's at frame 20 I'll move it downward a little bit more and move it a little bit more to the left now not too far down because we're we're starting to hit the edge of the tube right about there and we're gonna add a couple more keyframes put a playhead here bring this up slightly bring it over to the left here and then for the very last um, you know 30 you know, frame 30 there, 30 seconds, I'm going to bring this back into its main compositional position right about there. So as we take the playhead and start to pull across the timeline, we can see the ship itself start to move around on the X and Y axis while the motion is moving across the tube as well as illuminating the inside of the tube at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the application of perceived movement within a 3D interface in Photoshop CC. This is Stephen Burns. Enjoy.